Hello friends! I normally use cardstock to wrap chipboard for album covers. In this album I've used synthetic leather. It's an artificial material that is less than 1 mm thick. I'm using binding glue that is specially designed for artificial leather. The glue can also be used with other materials such as paper and cardboard. Next supplies are from In Love Art Shop. Cutting dies are meant to be used with a die cutting machine to cut different shapes and objects out of the paper. These are pre-made mini envelopes that I will be using for decoration and I will be putting small paper cards inside them for notes and journaling. Scrapbook paper is from Ideology Collection by Tim Holtz, as well as the metallic papers that are perfect for embossing technique. I'm also using other designer papers that are mentioned on the screen. For insertable cards I'm using chipboard that is 1 mm thick. This large frame is for decorating the covers and smaller ones are for page decoration. I'm also using a lot of different elements such as metal label clips for insertable cards and chipboard cutouts for mixed media decoration. Self-healing mat will protect desk surface from cuts and stains. Instead of it, you can also use thicker chipboard. This glue is photo safe, which means it can be used to glue photos into the album. I'm using different types of liquid glue in combination with double-sided adhesive tape. Crop a tile is a tool that can be used to punch holes in the paper and set eyelets. With corner punch you can round the paper corners, but it can also be used with chipboard and other materials. To achieve an odd look of the paper I'm using this dressing tool for the paper edges. I'm also using supplies that I normally use for other albums, such as utility knife, scissors, ruler, scoring board and scoring tool. For decoration I'm using die cuts and embossing folder along with die cutting machine. Wooden or plastic clips will help to hold papers in place while the glue is still drying. For mixed media decoration I'm using structure paste with stencils, spatula, primers and different types of paints. I will go into more details during the tutorial. I'm either using patina effect pastes or rust effect set to achieve an old metallic look of the elements. A lot of the supplies are optional and I'm using them only for decorative purpose such as acrylic paints, glitter and other embellishments. If you have any questions about the materials I'm using you can write me on my Instagram. I'm trying to answer as many of your questions as I can.
To make the covers, use two chipboard pieces and connect them with cardstock. Mark 3 cm on both sides of the paper, connect the marks and glue chipboard on the line. Instead of artificial leather, you can also use cardstock. If you don't have large paper, you can wrap each cover separately and connect them with the spine. Make sure that the paper is at least 2 or 3 cm longer than the chipboard on all four sides. Cut the corners of artificial leather. Make sure that you don't cut too close to the chipboard. Leave a few millimeters between the ends of chipboard and wrapping material.
To make hinges, take a chipboard and mark 1 cm. Then, make 10 marks with 1.5 cm between them. Repeat the same at the bottom of the chipboard and connect the marks. Then, mark 1 cm on top and bottom and cut vertical lines between those marks. Glue chipboard to the scrapbook paper. After wrapping the edges, cut lines into the paper. These scrapbook papers will protect decorative elements on pages. First, score 1 cm and fold the lines. Distress the edges and stain them with ink. You can also wrinkle the papers for additional old effect.
take the chipboard element we've made before and cut the lines into the scrapbook paper. Cut off the corners from 1 cm folds and glue them in every other cut line. To make the hinges, score 2 cm and 4 cm in the cardstock. Fold the papers and cut off the corners from 2 cm spaces. Next, glue them together and insert 1 cm part in the remaining 5 cut lines. These next steps are optional and only for decorative purpose. Punch holes on the corners and insert eyelets into them. Then place the hinges on the spine and mark the position of the eyelets. Punch holes on the marks and set eyelets in them. Later we will install metallic chain through the eyelets.
We will make base pages from two cardstock pieces. Score 1.5 cm on the larger one and glue the smaller cardstock to the folds. That way we will create an opening between two pages. For insertable cards I'm using chipboard that is 1mm thick. Instead of it you can also use the cardstock. Paint the edges with cold metallic paint and glue scrapbook paper on both sides. I'm also adding metallic label clips. They will not only serve as decoration but will also help with pulling the cards out from the opening between two pages. I'm applying gesso in two thin layers. Wait for it to be completely dry, then use stencils to create structured background. I'm using expand paste, but you can also use other types of structure pastes. The one I'm using expands when heating it up. I'm using gold metallic paste to paint the background, it's really transparent, that's why I'm applying multiple layers. With embossing folder you can create a 3D texture in print on the paper. For better results spray a bit of water mist on both sides of the paper. 
insert paper into embossing folder and pass it through the machine three times. I'm painting the background with metallic colors in different shades to achieve a rust effect. Since this paste is so transparent, I'm also using gold acrylic paint over it for better coverage. For rust effect on wooden elements, I'm using powder and reagents in yellow, brown and red color. First, create a wet primer layer on the surface. Then, press the powder into the wet primer and remove the excess. Randomly drop the rust effect reagents onto the surface and leave overnight to dry. I'm also using this technique on decorative clips for scrapbook paper that will be placed between two pages. I'm using this dressing tool to create an old looking paper. 
Slide it across paper edges a few times until they are distressed in a way you would like them to be. Instead of this tool, you can also use a pair of scissors. Run the plate of scissors down the edges of a paper. I'm also staining the paper with ink in brown color shade to make it appear even older and worn out. I've created this beautiful sign with alphabet dies. Place the letters on the paper and secure them with masking tape or washi tape. I'm placing cardstock over the paper so the imprints from cutting pads won't transfer to it. I'm also painting the paper with acrylic color for metallic effect. I've painted the chipboard edges with the same metallic color as the paper sign. Then I've glued cold cardstock on top side and placed the sign over it. Punch holes on corners and insert split pins into them. Secure them on the back side and glue chipboard to the page one. Most of the pages in this video won't be in order. That's because I had to make odd pages first so I wouldn't damage the decoration on pages with even numbers. For example, I'm making page number 3 first, then I'm decorating page number 2. I didn't go into much detail while creating mixed media decoration because it was my first time using this technique. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to make more mixed media projects. Mark 2 cm and 12 cm from the bottom of the page. Then mark 2 cm from the right edge. Make 4 marks with 1.5 cm distance between them, starting at 2 cm line that's on the right side. Connect the marks and cut 5 vertical lines that are 10 cm long. Start with the line that has a 2 cm distance from the right edge. To create photo cards, take 5 cardstock pieces, score 14 cm and fold the scored lines. Use ink to stain cards on both sides. Then make one card with a magnet under scrapbook paper and 4 cards without one. Magnets I'm using have a diameter of 1 cm.
start with a card that has a magnet. Cut off the corners from 1.5 cm fold. That way, it will be easier to insert it into the cut. Glue the folded part to the back side of the paper. Repeat the same steps with the four cards without the magnet. To create a closure strip, take cardstock piece and score it at 11 cm. Use ink to stain it and decorate the top side of it with scrapbook paper. Apply glue to the folded part and glue it to the back side of the brown cardstock. Apply double sided adhesive to top side of the second magnet. Close the cardstock strip and magnet will stick to it. Glue scrapbook paper over the magnet. Use belt tie to decorate the top side of the closure strip.
thick cardstock that measures 26 by 26 cm, then score it at 1 and 2 cm. Glue the cardstock with 5 cards on top of it. Next, apply glue on the first scored centimeter and glue it into the opening between two pages. Make sure that the folded part sticks to the top and not to the bottom side.
we will make page 5 in the same way that we previously made page 3. The only difference is that we will be adding another row with 5 cards, so that's 10 cards in total.
Use gesso to prime the chipboard cutouts. When the primer is completely dry, use combination of three pastes in mint green, brass and blue color to achieve a patina-like effect. First, I've painted the surface with brass color, then I've mixed mint and blue ones together. I've used acrylic paint to create a metallic effect. If you want to go over the top like me, you can also add some sparkly glitter.
we've reached the end of the video if you have any questions you can ask me here in the comments below or write me on my instagram check the finished album by clicking picture on the screen also don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in the next one